Good morning, guys. Good morning. It's a Sunday morning, and of course, we're going to church. So I hope your week has been good. Mine was well you know ups and downs but i'm thankful i'm here i made it to another one and i hope you're all doing well if flu still a go on please try as best as possible to avoid catching that flu because the one is not nice so before we leave out as usual let us pray heavenly father as i'm about to go into your temple lord i pray that you will replenish my spirit lord let me have a wonderful time in your place of worship I'm asking for journey and mercies to and from church of art. I pray that today be a wonderful week for each and every one of us. Help some of us to come to know you, be thankful for things you have done and will continue to do in all our lives. In your wonderful name I pray, Lord. Amen. Let's get going.
like a yes. little bigger sister and my traveling partner and you know something let me just tell say it before I start and before I read sometimes you have some people in the church that may not be preachers they may not be singers but God has sent them to be supporters to the man of God and in greeting you let me greet my pastor my friend my son my brother pastor God sister God let me greet the officers of the church and thank you again for having me here yeah. members of the church you are my brothers and my sisters yeah, and I love you yeah. joy brother what is it bubbling over peace bubbling over love bubbling over is where I want to speak from today last time I was here pastor you were not here but it was like a Bible study we had wasn't that so yes, yes but, and I said if I should come again I'm going to preach so uh, here I am again and this preach I'm going to preach today yeah. preach today and I hope God will open our hearts and give us a blessing today The passage I have chosen, as was referred to by our minister, is somewhat a kind of a controversial. I saw things I want here, so. <laughs> but I've also just said, so you don't need to look so. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Development. Amen. Moving forward. Grow. This verse is a bit controversial and in this time that we are in, it kind of explains some things. Minister, you want me to leave out this verse or you want me to deal with it? Minister said preach. So we're going to preach for that verse. The first verse of Ephesians 1. And we have been studying Ephesians 1 to move on. Because how we study at our church is that we, we started from Romans and we take on every chapter right and every verse. But this verse I find a bit, it could be a bit controversial. But I want you to understand my brothers and sisters and I want you to Give the knowledge that it has. In fact, there are a few verses in this that I want you to keep in your heart and never forget. The first verse for all the chapter with this. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless this sermon, my God, and speak to the hearts of your people as I commit myself to you. Amen. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. By the will of God. 
not by his own doing. Paul, let me tell you, had no intention at all to be an apostle. That was also good. But Paul had no intention. Paul did not look on the apostleship as something nice and choose it. He did consider it to be a clean work that he would like to do. He did not consider being an apostle as a status thing, a nice, res respectable profession. And can I tell you that preaching also is not so nice and easy. is going to change. Yes. Acts chapter 9 tells us that suddenly there was a light around him from heaven. My brothers and sisters from heaven. And he fell to the ground. And he heard a voice said, Saul, Saul, why, why are you persecuting me? I will cut the account long, cut it short. I will not go To have seen Jesus physically. 
the second paragraph of the first verse. I'm going to do it fast because I don't want time to run out and I don't think all I have to say. The second paragraph of the first verse, it said, To the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. And this I want you to understand the time we are in church. We have no, we have no what is called to be politically correct. Not about parties, but to say the right things. We cannot afford to offend anybody. We cannot be not inclusive of everybody. We can't single out anybody. We can't leave out anybody. But I want to tell you this, that this letter to the church in Ephesus, Paul directly said to the saints, to the people of God. And what I want to say to you, my sisters and brothers, I'm not leaving out anybody, but what, who I want to get this message is the people of God today. This is a message to build the people of God. And as an evangelist, it's not good to leave out anybody now, because that's what I do. Call for people to, be, to, to, to come to God, but I must also strengthen the people of God, brother. So this letter was speaking to the faithful in Christ. The saints which are Ephesus. Paul was encouraging them and enlightening them of the blessings of God. And there are a few things here I want you to hold on to. I want you to hold on to them. Never forget them. How do you know that you are a child of God? How do you know, my sisters and brothers, that you're a child of God? How are you sure that you're a child of God? Huh? Let me bring you to Romans 8 verse 16. Romans 8 verse 16 says, The Spirit itself bears witness with your spirit. Hallelujah. That we are children of God. You can't go on to pay it under. The Spirit itself bears witness with your spirit that you are the children of God. The confirmation is that the Spirit itself that is in you, Jesus Christ Spirit that is in you, bear witness with your spirit that you are children of God. The two spirit mesh. Your spirit and the Spirit of God work together. And spirit click. The inward man is renewed. The spirit that is in you changes you from who you were to who you now are. Yes. Verse 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. But can I tell you? But you who are, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, communicating and directed by the spirit. But the Bible went on to say, "No, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, what is that, brother? It's not a It's not this. The Bible said that you can't say that you are a child of God and you do not have the spirit of God." That is how you know that you are a child of God, by the Spirit of God in you. My sisters and brothers, let's look into the scripture some more. And I don't know if there is any secret Christian. Pastor, any secret Christian? I don't know if there is any undercover Christian. We are not hiding our beliefs, and we are not hiding that. Jesus Christ is our Lord. The Bible says, For if you are ashamed to own me here on earth, then I am ashamed to own you when the Son of Man comes. So, 
Another question I want to put to you. But let me first say this. And this is what, what our motto in our Congress group. This is our motto. How do others know that you are a Christian? I put it to you first. How do you know that you are a Christian? By the Spirit that bears witness with your spirit. How do others know that you are a Christian? St. John 13 verses 34 and 35 says, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you may also love one another. And listen to this, verse 35 says, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. That is how people are going to know that you are Christian because of your love for one another. And because of the fruits of the Spirit that you will display. Am I right here somebody? The fruits of the Spirit that you will display will testify. There is one, one famous blind singer one famous blind singer and I want you to listen to this carefully he said there is none so blind as he that refuses to see there is none so blind as he that refuses to see your eyes that may not be blind they may not be shut down but if you fail to, to see of where God wants you to go. You are glad. Lord, to whom that is able to keep you from falling and to present you far as before his presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen.